Hey there, my friends. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about genetics of cockatiels, meaning we are talking about their mutations, their colors, and how they inherit them from their parents. I thought about it, and I think the best way to do this video is dividing it in uh, three parts. First part, I will explain how it works for cockatiels, meaning their genes, uh, their chromosomes, what are the dominant genes for cockatiels and recessive genes, and how work uh, sex-linked mutation for cockatiels. Then we will go ahead to a second part of the video where I will show you the actual birds, but not my birds because I don't have uh, a cockatiel for every mutation. I have many cockatiels, but I don't have every single mutation in my small breeding, so that'd be impossible. We will see them on my computer. I will look for the mutations and briefly describe each one of them. And that's going to be the second part. The third part is going to be a more practical part. Meaning we will pretend to have a pair of cockatiels of a particular mutation and we will see what the offspring will be. We'll make some practice like that so you will understand uh, how it works, I, I hope so. If you remember Mendel classes from school, it's going to be very similar. Not exactly the same, but very similar. For the first part, I'm gonna start from scratch. If you don't wanna hear that, you can skip forward, but I'll try to be clear and I'll go fast and I'll try to make it as simple as possible. So our chromosomes are what carries our genetic information. We have, in humans, 22 pairs of autosomes and one pair of allosomes or sexual chromosomes. Now, I don't know how many autosomes there are in cockatiels, but it, it doesn't matter. We can explain it perfectly even without knowing the exact number of the autosomes. The sexual chromosomes are different for cockatiels, but we will get to it shortly. Let's take the example of uh, a pair of autosomes. We have two identical chromosomes. One taken from the father, one from the mother. They are like a mirror. We can have uh, this spot. This is, for our example, a locus. In this spot is held the information of uh, a particular aspect. Here we have a gene that can say who knows, the color of the eyes or the hair, and uh, we have two of them, one from the father and one from the mother, and the one that is dominant will show the effect on the aspect of the animal, or the human in this case. Then there are genes that are only partially dominant, so if you have one of them mutated and the other normal, you will see a small effect of it, and if they are both mutated, you see the full effect of it. Why are we making a distinction between autosomes and sexual chromosomes? Well, it's because the pairs are not a perfect mirror as it was for the autosomes. In humans, if we have a female, the two chromosomes are a mirror, but in the male, we have the X chromosome that is full, complete, with every information, and the Y chromosome that is very small, and it carries very few informations. So if we have a mutated gene in the X chromosome, like this one, let's say the Daltonism gene, even if it's recessive, it doesn't have a counterpart in the Y chromosome to fix it, and so we will see the effect, and we will have a daltonic uh, human. In the female, we have uh, two complete chromosomes. So if this is mutated for the daltonism, and this is not, this is dominant, and we won't see the effect in the female. Going to our beloved cockatiels, we have this difference. In cockatiels, it's the exact opposite. The male, the male has 
two identical chromosomes. And the female has one normal chromosome and one small chromosome. In birds, they are called Z and W. And the male has two Z, or two X, if you want to stick with humans. And they are the same and complete. And the female has Z and W. So we can say X and Y. And they are very important because we have four mutations, four very common, well, three common mutations and one uh, a bit more rare mutation that take effect in the X chromosome. So we have lutino, pearl, cinnamon, yellow cheek. They can all happen only in the X chromosome. Well, yellow cheek is different because we have uh, many genes that can give the effect of the yellow cheek, but one of them is a sex-linked gene, so we can add it in this list as well. As a result of that, we have that a male, to be a lutino, needs to have the mutated gene in both chromosomes. Lutino is recessive to the normal color. So if we have normal here and lutino here, we're going to see a normal bird sp split to lutino, but it will still look like a normal bird. Same for pearl, cinnamon, and yellow chick. The female just has one uh, Z chromosome. So if that chromosome is mutated, the bird will look like uh, the mutation, will look lutino. This also means that a female can't be split to lutino or PR or cinnamon or yellow cheek. It either is uh, that mutation or she's not. This also means that if you have a lutino cockatiel, it's slightly more likely to be a female than a male because as uh, daltonic uh, humans are more likely male than female, the cockatiels with these mutations are more likely uh, females than males because of the opposite thing. But as we have been selecting uh, these mutations a lot, they are still very common even in males. So if you did understand this, let's try to test it out. If you have a lutino male and a normal female, and in the nest, you see a not lutino cockatiel. What's going to be, male or female? Well, it's pretty easy to answer this, because if you have a lutino father, it means it has both genes mutated to lutino. So if it gives this one or this one, it doesn't matter. It's going to be either way a mutated to lutino chromosome. And the female can give a not mutated Z or a useless W. <laughs> well, not useless, it just doesn't have information. So if she gives the W and the father gives the mutated Z, you are going to have a ZW female, Lutino. And if the female gives the Z chromosome, you are going to have a Z mutated to lutino from the father and a Z not mutated from the mother. So you are going to have a male, Z and Z, who's going to be normal. Split to lutino, but normal. So in that case, you can say that every female is going to be lutino and every male is going to be normal, split to lutino. I divided the mutations into two groups, regular and sex-linked. Regular are in the autosomes and sex-linked are linked to the Z chromosome. Even if it's not a mutation, I wanted to add here the normal color, which is uh, grey with yellow face and uh, red cheek for male and slightly yellow face and red cheek for the female.
but apart from that we have these regular mutations. We have PIDE. PIDE is considered a recessive mutation, but it's not exactly recessive because if we have a split to PID, which means just one chromosome with the mutation and the other without the mutation, we still see some effect of the PID genes. We see some uh, yellow dots behind the head and we can also see sometimes some uh, yellow feather in the body. Then we have dominant silver. It's considered dominant because even one uh, single mutated uh, gene will uh, change the color of the bird. But it's not exactly dominant because if, the, if both the genes are mutated, the color changes and we have the full uh, silver coloration. If only one is mutated, we have the so-called single factor silver, which is a nice color different from the normal and different from the double factor silver which is with both genes mutated then we have the recessive silver and it's just a recessive gene without any more to add i will show you the peaks later then we have fallow it's also recessive we have emerald recessive and these mutations this mutation, they alter the distribution of the melanin, meaning the gray part of the bird. And then we have these mutations. White face, recessive. Pastel face, recessive to normal color, but dominant to the white face. Then we have dominant yellow cheek. Dominant yellow cheek is actually dominant because if we have even one mutated gene, the, the effect will take place. Then we have cream face, recessive but dominant to white face. And then we have gold cheek, recessive but dominant to white face. This group will alter the color of the face of the bird. In the face there are the lipochrome and cytosine pigments. They are usually yellow and red and this mutation can change these colors. And uh, the sex link uh, mutations, we saw them earlier. Only thing I want to add is that as you see we have yellow cheek here, we have yellow cheek here. They give the same visual effect but they are different genes. Let's begin with the pied cockatiels, like this one. Pied is a mutation that alters the distribution of the gray pigment on the bird. Gray is replaced by yellow, and it's very regular. You can have a lot of different birds with this mutation, from this one or this one. This one is pied and white face, but just consider the pied mutation. It is very symmetrical and there's a lot of white in this bird. Or this one. This one is pied and PR. But even uh, here you can consider just the pied mutation and you'll see that it's still symmetrical with a lot of yellow. Pied is a mutation where sexing the bird is impossible by the aspect because uh, the color is so much altered that you can't rely on the typical yellow face of the male and gray face of the female. You have to rely on the behavior of the animal to determine the sex or DNA sexing. In this mutation, we also have the possibility of a clear pipe, like this. This looks almost like a lutino but it's not a lutino, it's a pied. You see it has more yellow than a lutino because a lutino is mostly white in the body and yellow in the head. A clear pied is more yellow and has uh, brown eyes instead of red eyes. And then we can finish with this mutation by looking at how the split to pied cockatiels look. 
like this one. You see it has yellow spots behind the head and this is typical of being just split to bite. This one. And that's it. Now going to one of the most famous mutations, Lutino, you can see that it's a bird that's mostly white and yellow. There is a lot of white in that mutation because the gray of the body is replaced by white. Sometimes there's some uh, yellow suffusion, but it's very low. It's mostly white. And we have the red eye. Lutino is a particular mutation, as we saw before, it's a sex-linked mutation. This mutation is very often linked to the Lutino syndrome. This syndrome goes from uh, a slightly bald spot in the head. This one is not so slight, it's pretty, pretty heavy for, for this one, for this to heavier problems like uh, neurological problems or the bird is less smart than other birds, can have more night fright, is uh, less uh, able to fly. I don't know why this happens. I have my theory that is that there are genes near to the Lutino gene and when we selected the Lutino mutation we indirectly selected these bad genes as well. This is just my theory and I don't have any proof for that except that the bold mutation if we want to call it that way and the Lutino mutation are not the same gene because there are Lutino cockatiels that are not bold. They are just very rare. If you breed two Lutinos, the offspring is more likely to be bold. If you breed a bold male to a normal cockatiel, the daughters are probably going to be bold. If you breed a not bold male with a normal female, the offspring is likely to be not bold, like the father. In a cockatiel that's just Lutino, as I said before, we see a lot of white and some yellow in the head. But Lutino can be paired with other mutations like beard. And so you see the markings of the beard where the black, the, the gray is replaced with white and the yellow remains. So you can still see the beard markings on the cockatiel. Also Lutino pied is going to look a bit different with more yellow because the pied has some yellow on the body and that yellow remains. Another interesting thing about Lutino cockatiels is their eye color because when they born they have a very red eye and when they grow up the eye will get a bit darker but still red. But there are cases and it's explained very well in this peak on Google. If the Lutino is not just Lutino, but it's a cinnamon Lutino or Lutino PR and is split to pied and or white face, we can have a color that when the bird grows up turns into green or amber. If it's a Lutino split to pied and or white face, it can turn blue or gray white. So if you like Lutino cockatiels and you want to own them or breed them, go ahead, but just keep in mind that they have the Lutino syndrome that's always ready to come in and you have to prevent it by breeding only subjects that are perfect. And avoid breeding a Lutino with another Lutino unless they are 100% perfect with no signs of boldness or any other problem. Let's go with the PR cockatiels. That's another sex-linked mutation and it's very pretty. You see the PR markings on the body. They have uh, some yellow, some black, some white, and they can be different on every bird. You see these are different than this a little. And from this, 
this mutation is pretty simple to understand and it can be paired with other mutations like uh, with pipe. I think PR pipe go very well together. I like birds like this a lot. Or like this. Male PR coccus tend to lose their markings as they grow up. After one or two moles, they start to fade away. And after the bird is two years old, three years old, it will look like if it's not the PR at all. Females will uh, stay with the markings forever. Cinnamon is the, a mutation that will uh, make the color of the bird lighter. It will still remain gray, but a lighter gray, sometimes brown. As we are going to see very soon, it can be mistaken with other mutations like silver, fallow, recessive silver, but it has a normal dark brown eye. And very often the nails will be lighter as well. This mutation, like any other mutation, can be paired with the others. For example, we can have a cinnamon pear. And as you see, this is the effect. This one, we saw it before, is cinnamon PR pipe. The eye looks red, but it's just an effect of the light. It's definitely brown. Cinnamon lutino looks almost like a lutino, but with some uh, gray color on the wings and on the back. Two subjects can be different between each other. This one with red eye is a great example of a lutino cinnamon. And it'd be very hard to distinguish this from a recessive silver or a fellow. I don't know if I'd be able to tell the difference. Then let's look at the dominant silver mutation. This one here is a single factor dominant silver. You see the shades of grey on the body with the edges of the feathers being more dark. This is a very cool mutation. It's cool also when associated with the white faced mutation, like this. One of my favorite mutations, for sure. This one is a pastel face silver, single factor. And when both of the genes are mutated, you have the double factor. This one is a double factor. See, it's way more clear, almost white, but you can still see the shades of gray. This one looks like a single factor. One thing about this mutation is, is that there are different grades of silver. We can have uh, dark type, uh, medium type, light type. For example, this one is a dark silver. Very cool. This is a single factor. But this one also could be a single factor light type. I mean, uh, if you have a very light single factor, it could look like a dark type double factor. Sometimes it, it's hard to tell if it's a light single factor or a dark double factor. This one is a medium. And this one, in my opinion, is a double factor. And you can see the head is darker. This is typical. This one is, in my opinion, a double factor silver, white face. And you can see this dark area in the head. It's referred as the skulka. This one could be either a double factor of the dark silver dominant mutation or a single factor light silver not so sure about that one also this mutation is more evident in males in females it's harder to spot the silver mutation especially when they are young when they are very young 
you can confuse a single factor female for a normal female or for a cinnamon female it's very hard especially if it's a dark type silver in this case you have to wait a few months and uh, the feathers will uh, light up a little while for males it's also true that when they grow up they become lighter but even when very young you can still see the silver effect when breeding cockatiels one should avoid pairing a double factor with another double factor or a double factor with a single factor because they tend to reduce the size of the bird and they can also show both spots. So pairing two single factor silver cockatiels is the limit I suggest if you want to bring this mutation. Recessive silver. As the name says, it looks almost like a dominant silver, but it's recessive, so both the genes have to be mutated. It looks like a pretty light uh, silver and the main difference between these and the dominant silver is the eye this mutation has a red eye like a lutino sometimes it can be mistaken for a cinnamon but again if you check the eye you will see that the eye is red in this mutation the fellow mutation is another recessive mutation so both of the chromosomes have to be mutated in order to see the effect. And the eye is red. It's very similar with the recessive silver. It's maybe a bit lighter. And the female is lighter than the male with more yellow all around. These birds can be easily mistaken for Lutino cinnamon. Because as we see in this pic, they are almost identical red eye soft gray color on the body and this one on the right is a fellow pie so this yellow spot it's yellow because it's also pie not just fellow if it was just a fellow cockatiel it would have been gray in this spot so really identical if you find a bird like this it could be a fellow cockatiel but it's more likely to be a lutino cinnamon because fellow is rare and Lutino cinnamon are not so common, but they are still more common than follow cockatiels. Follow, as well as recessive silver and dominant silver, as I said before, is a rare mutation, and so breeding one follow with another follow can lead to the offspring being smaller and having problems such as uh, bald spot or other stuff that we want to avoid. So if you want to breed this mutation, it's better to pair two splits to fellow instead of two fellow birds. Again, I don't know why this happens, but my opinion is that new mutations have been bred between themselves for a long time in order to secure the mutation. And in breeding will lead to homozygosity, and this usually leads to problems regarding the health, the size, and feather problems. I think that the reason for all these problems when pairing rare mutations together is because of homozygosity. Something I forgot to say is that mutations change also the color of the beak and of the feet. Uh, red eye mutations like lutino, recessive silver, fellow, they will make the feet and the beak look pink. While normally they are more on a gray scale. Not always, but they're usually on the gray side, like this. Silver dominant is uh, gray in the feet and in the beak. And cinnamon, I think, these are the feats of a cinnamon cockatiel. Pides are different because the distribution of the pigment is random. So a pied cockatiel can have a completely pink feet and nails or can have a dark nail and a pink nail. So it's very random. Olive or emerald mutation is a very rare mutation and it has the effect 
of uh, giving an interaction between the gray and the yellow of the bird that can looks like it's green, but it's not an actual green, it's just the yellow and the gray mixed together. Sometimes it can be mistaken for a silver, while other times it's clearly an olive cockatiel. When it's paired with a white face, it looks even more like a silver because when the yellow pigment is gone, the particular trait of this mutation, which is the interaction between yellow and gray, fades away. And so it looks very similar to just the silver. So in this mutation, I think that if you want to see the most of it, you don't have to pair it with the white face mutation. Talking about white face, let's talk about the mutations that affect the face of the bird. White face is when the yellow and the red, the lipochrome and the psittacin pigments of the bird, are replaced by white. So we have a white and gray bird. This mutation is recessive. So both of the genes have to be mutated in order to see it. This mutation can be paired with any other mutation. We can have white face PR, pied, white face uh, cinnamon, white face lutino. White face lutino is just uh, known as albino, but it's actually the combination of these two colors as we see white face lutino is that kind of bird. Very pretty, but it's also prone to the same problems as the lutino, meaning the bald spot and the lutino syndrome in general. Pastel face is a mutation that's uh, recessive to the normal color, but it's dominant to the white face. The effect of this mutation is the cheek turning from red to orange. It's very similar to other face mutations, and sometimes it's very hard to tell the difference. This one, for example, could look like a pastel face, but also like a yellow cheek or a yellow face or a gold face. I was wrong, sorry, it's not gold face, it's gold cheek. Well, it's basically the same thing as you see the, the cheek is yellow instead of red and pastel face is more like orange but uh, there are some pastel face cockatiels that are more yellow than orange so the difference is very little and sometimes one just can't tell if it's a gold cheek or a pastel face it looks like a yellow cheek or yellow face but it's recessive and it's not sex linked Yellow cheek is a sex link mutation as is lutino, pearl, and the cinnamon. It looks like the gold cheek, more or less. The cheek can be of a deep yellow or orange. So this bird, it'd be hard to say if it's a yellow cheek or a pastel face. While this one, this one is clearly a yellow cheek. Then we have the yellow face mutation. And this looks like the yellow cheek. No big difference at all in my opinion. But this is not a sex linked mutation, but it's a dominant mutation. So it's in the normal chromosomes and just one of the two chromosomes has to be mutated in order to see this effect. This peak, it w there was the same peak even when uh, I googled pastel face cockatiel. They, they can be very similar in many aspects. So yellow cheek, yellow face, gold cheek, they all look the same mostly, but it's different the way they work because gold cheek is recessive in the normal chromosome. Yellow face is dominant in the normal chromosome and yellow cheek is sex linked. Three different genes give almost the same result. And finally, we have the cream face. Cream face is very rare where I live. And this is almost white with a very little yellow coloration that's very hard to see. 
For example, I think this one could be just a yellow cheek because it's a very strong yellow. This one, this one looks more like the cream face. Very soft. You can hardly see there's some yellow in this bear. So now that we have seen every mutation, let's try to make some example and understand how the birds will inherit the mutations from their parents. Let's try to consider the male with a mutation that is in the normal chromosomes, like for example pied. Let's see, the male is a pied male. Both chromosomes are mutated. And the female is not a pied, is just a normal cockatiel. So she doesn't have any sex linked mutation or any mutation in the normal chromosomes. So we just consider the pied mutation for this example. Well, the possible results are four because the sons can take one chromosome from the father and one chromosome from the mother. And if it takes the one from the father and the A from uh, mother, we have the first result. Then we can have one and B. Then we can have Q and A and Q and B. So what? In this case, we have mutated and normal so it's going to be a split to pied it will look like a normal bird but uh, with some uh, spot uh, or dot behind the, the head second case one and B. it's going to be the same third the same Fourth, the same. Every song is going to be split. Let's try to change things a little. Let's say that the female is also split to pied. Let's say you have a male that is pied, a female that you see has a few dots behind the head. It's definitely going to be a split to pied. Let's see how the offspring is going to be. Well, one and a is going to be pied. One and b split like before. Two and a pied. Two and b split. So in this case, we are going to have 50% of the offspring being pied and 50% being split to pied. I'm not going to make an example for every mutation. You can just do it by yourself if you understand this. And if there are more mutations, you just have to add more possibilities. Let's see, for example, a male that is uh, the no pied split to pier, and a female that's just split to pied. So as you see, we have 16 possible combinations, 8 for males and 8 for females. Females are going to be those with the D chromosome in my example, the W chromosome, which I called D. And uh, males are those who take the C chromosome. Let's see one of them, for example, 1A. For C. It's going to be pied because it will take 
slide from this slide from this four is uh, not mutated and C is not mutated As it took C, it's going to be a male because we have both big chromosomes here. This is going to be a male and it's going to be pied. If it took the D instead of the C, it, have, it would have been a female. still pied and not mutated for the PR, so just pied female. Let's consider something else like 1A3D. Well, in that case, it's going to be pied and it's also going to be PR because it's a female. So this mutation is enough. Even if the even if you don't see the male being PR because it is just split to PR, it's enough to have a female PR cockatiel. Every PR that borns from this couple is going to be a female without any chance of being a male because the female can only give a Z chromosome not mutated or a W chromosome which has no information. So if the female gives the not mutated uh, Z chromosome we are gonna see a male cockatiel that can't be PR because PR is recessive so it can be split, but not visual PR. If the female gives the D chromosome, the W I mean, that we call the D in this example, but the W chromosome, which is small and without information, and if the male gives the mutated Z chromosome, well, in that case, that's enough to have a visual PR female. Let's take another small example with the male having both the genes mutated to PR or Lutino or whatever sex link mutation you want to consider. This means that every daughter of this couple is going to be PR because the father will give 100% a mutated Z chromosome. The mother will give to every daughter a W chromosome. And so the mutation in the Z chromosome will take effect, no matter what. And this is the meaning of having a sex-linked couple. And this is the case where you can understand the sex of the cockatiel, even if it's very young. Luckily, there are calculators online where you have to insert the mutations of the parents and you get as a result all of the possible mutations of the offspring. This, all this thing was just to make you understand how the things work. If you want in the future a video where I show you how to use the calculator online, just let me know in the comments. So guys, let me know what you think about this video because I don't know how good I am explaining things like that to other people and I want to know if it was understandable at least. Did you find it useful? Is the genetic of cockatiels more clear for you now? Not sure about that, but I hope so. Remember to subscribe, leave a like, share, and see you soon in my next videos.